Hello, my name is Russell Smith and this is Windows Business Weekly. Today I'm going to show you the changes in Windows 10 version 20H2. So the Windows 10 October 2020 update or version 20H2 as it's otherwise known is now rolling out. I've got it installed on my main daily driver device and if your device is ready you will find it as an optional download and install in the Windows update section of the settings app or it will get automatically deployed to you when your organization decides that it's ready for your device. Now, it's a relatively small update, which is good news, because that means that because there aren't many significant changes, it should be relatively safe to install. If you already have the May 2020 update installed on your device, the October update will come as a small cumulative update. So it just should take maybe five or 10 minutes to install, but it does require a reboot. If you're using an older version of Windows 10 and decide to upgrade to the 20H2 feature update, it will be a full operating system reinstall. So let's jump over to the PC and have a look at the main changes. So the first visual change that you'll notice is to the start menu. So you'll see here that there's a slightly different design to what we've been used to, and it's mainly connected to color. So before the tiles on the start menu were influenced by the accent color that you had chosen as part of your Windows theme. So basically what you tended to get were these garish blocks of color on the start menu that were quite hard to look at without sunglasses, to be honest. But now what we have is a much more easy on the eye uh, visual design and the, the color of the tiles on your start menu will actually match your selected Windows theme. So here I have the standard Windows theme, but if you have, for instance, the dark theme or the light theme selected, the colors on the start menu will change to match that theme so that they blend in with the background of the start menu itself. And you can, as you can see here, it look, looks much nicer. Now the start menu does also have a slight transparency, but whether you can see it or not really seems to depend on what windows you have sitting behind the start menu itself. But it all looks quite nice when everything's laid out there. And I think this is a big uh, visual improvement for Windows 10. So that's the start menu, but I also want to show you some changes that are connected to the Windows settings app. So the first thing is connected to the system control panel applet. Now, if I open the legacy control panel, probably most of you are familiar with the system control panel applet. You just come to system and then you would click here system. Now this opens up in the Windows 10 settings app and you get all of that information that you used to get in the legacy control panel here. The uh, graphic settings have also been updated, so you now have the option to set the refresh rate of your monitor under display settings. So while in the past you would have to go into the legacy control panel or the control panel applet for your monitor, you can now do all of that within the Windows 10 settings app. Now, there are some significant changes to the way that Edge works in this version of Windows 10. The first and probably most important thing is that the Chromium-based version of Microsoft's Edge browser is now built into the operating system and it's installed by default. So I'm going to open Edge here. You get the Edge icon on the taskbar, of course, by default, and you'll probably recognize this as the Chromium-based uh, version of Microsoft's latest browser. But there are some other changes as well. 
And probably this is my favorite change in the 20H2 update. So now the browser has a deeper integration with the Alt tab experience. So probably most of you are familiar with the Alt tab key combination. So if you press Alt and tab, you're able to cycle through all of the open applications in Windows and switch between them. Now, in the past, the browser was just one application and you would see the browser in the Alt tab experience just represented like any other application like Word or Excel, for instance. But in this version of Windows, all that has changed. So I'm going to open a couple of tabs here. So let's open YouTube. Let's open, I don't know, the BBC. And let's open msn.com. So we've got three tabs open here. Now, the difference is if I open the Alt tab experience, what you'll see is rather than the browser represented as an individual window, just one window, you get the three most recent tabs, we'll only have three tabs here open, represented almost as if they're separate applications. And of course, the idea behind this is to allow you to go back to what you were previously working on without having to fiddle around with the different tabs when you switch back to the browser window. You just go back straight to the tab that you were using instead. And I think this is a great thing. And it really I've been using this version of Windows now for a couple of weeks. And it already really helps to stop that awkward break in the workflow that you sometimes get. Now, if you don't like this new experience with Alt Tab, you can change back to the default settings or modify how this works a little bit. So if I go back to the settings app and I come down to multitasking under system, you see here that we have a section called Alt Tab. Now, the default setting is that Alt Tab will show you the five most recent open tabs in Edge. But you can change that. So you could change it to, for instance, the three most recent tabs, all open tabs across all of your browser windows if you want. Or you could just change it to show only open browser windows, which is the legacy behavior that we've had in previous versions of Windows 10. But anyway, give that a try. If you don't like it, you can always switch it off. But I think that's uh, probably the most significant new feature in this version of Windows. There's another uh, little change which I'd like to talk about as well to the way that pinned sites work. So you can pin sites to the taskbar. So for instance, if you decide that you use YouTube on a regular basis, you see here that I have YouTube uh, pinned to the taskbar. Now, Previously, this would basically just show you uh, one preview uh, on the taskbar like you can see here. But if I open another YouTube tab, so I'm going to go to YouTube here in a second tab. Just take a few seconds. My internet connection running slowly. And if I come down here now to the pinned site, you can see that we now get to see both of those open tabs. Now you'll see all of the open tabs connected to this pin site on the taskbar, regardless of which window, which edge window those tabs are open in. You now get to see them all and it just becomes easier to find all of your open, in this case, YouTube tabs or whatever site, of course, that you have pinned to the taskbar. So that's it for Edge, and there are a couple of other changes that I want to quickly talk about that are worth mentioning. So there's a little tweak to the Action Center, and now in notifications you get an icon as well as, as, well as the name of the application from which the notification came from. So if I open the Action Center here, you can see that we get an icon for uh, the Microsoft Store, or when you, when you get a banner icon that flies out from the uh, Action Center or from the side of the window, when you get a new notification, you'll get an icon for the application as well as the application name, just to help you more quickly recognize where that notification has come from and do you need to pay attention to it right now. 
Also, focus assist has become less noisy. So if you switch focus assist on, then you won't get a notification telling you, yada, 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 focus assist is going to help you out and keep track of all these notifications while you're busy. Also, when you switch focus assist off, you won't get another notification telling you, yeah, I've got all of these things that you need to look at. You can just open the Action Center and all of those notifications will be waiting there for you to action. And again, you can change that back to the legacy behavior uh, in the settings app. If you have a convertible device where you can detach the screen from the keyboard before when you switched, when Windows automatically switched to uh, tablet mode, you would have to press to confirm that that's what you want to do. Now that process is completely automatic. So Windows will just switch. You won't have to confirm, yes, I want to switch to tablet mode or I want to switch back to desktop mode. It just happens and you can get on uh, with working straight away. And from an end user point of view, uh, if you are using the Your Phone application with a selected set of Samsung handsets, you can now run applications that are installed on your Samsung phone directly on Windows 10. So you don't need to pick up your handset to open an application that isn't available for Windows 10, for instance. You're using it usually on your phone. You can see that application on your phone. The, the application is mirrored, if you like, to Windows. You can interact with it and use that application without actually having, again, to break your workflow to pick up your device. But as I said, that is unfortunately, at the time uh, of recording this video, just limited to a specific uh, list of Samsung handsets. Now, if you're an IT professional, you haven't been left out. Now, like any full Windows update, this is the one that gets the full 30 months of support if you're running an enterprise or education SKU. If you're running the spring update, you get a much smaller window of support, 18 months if I remember correctly. So this is the one that you want to roll out to your users because this is where you get the support from Microsoft for a much longer period of time. And that means you don't have to upgrade to a new feature update for at least that period. Also, there is a change to mobile device management to MDM. So now you can control local users and groups much in the same way that you would be able to do with group policy. So if you have an MDM provider uh, like Microsoft Intune, for instance, you can now configure those settings without having to use Active Directory group policy. So that's it for the updates uh, for the October 2020 uh, release of Windows. It might not sound like very much, but there are some important little things there that I think, especially if you're running the May 2020 update, it's worth getting this upgrade if your device is ready. If you found this video useful, please uh, like it. Uh, down in the corner there. And if you'd like to see more content from me, similar videos and how to's, tutorials, uh, tips and tricks on how to use Microsoft Tech, then please subscribe to my channel. Uh, also down in the other, other corner here. Uh, and that would be really great.